Hi everybody, it's Camille from Butternut Soap Company. Today, actually I'm going to be making a few things. I have to click on this, hang on a second, continue recording without audio. Even though I double checked, there is audio. So I'm trying a new way. I installed this camera again and I'm recording with the app. So we'll see. We'll see if this turns out. So I don't have everything weighed out. I have almost, almost everything weighed out here. This is a teeny tiny batch. I don't usually make them this small, but I just want to see if something worked. In here, I've got beeswax and lotion bar additive, which I don't remember ordering it, but I would, when I cleaned out the soap room, I found it and I went, huh, I must have thought I wanted this for my lotion bars. I don't know. But after looking into it, turns out that this is supposed to help with the graininess of butters, shea butter being the worst. And I have tempered butters. I tempered these yesterday. Yeah, I'm kind of messy here. But uh, this one's my shea. I didn't do a lot because I've tempered my butters before and still ended up with grainy butters. This is mango and I have some kokum butter here that I tempered. Because kokum, I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I've made low, my uh, lip balms with the kokum butter before. But I don't know if that one's a culprit or not. And after looking online... I haven't got any concrete answers. So I haven't weighed everything out because these butters still haven't been weighed. So like I said, beeswax, lotion bar additive. And here I have hemp oil, olive oil, avocado. Do I have anything else in there? I said olive oil. Yeah, okay. That's all I've got in there. And then I have my three butters. And of course my... um. My flavor oil. I love flavor oils. They're so nice. And I'm using coconut today. It's coconut cream by Candora. So the first thing I'm going to do is I thought I was going to be melting my beeswax and stuff. Is I'm going to weigh out my butters. And I'll just put them on this little piece of paper here. I don't need much. It's so funny working in such a teeny tiny batch. Okay, so I have my shea. And I'm not using a lot of it. I'm actually cutting right down because I Shea is ooh, Shea is a jerk. It really is a jerk. Okay, so even that's like way too much. But I way cut back on my on my butters. The only butter that I kind of upped a little bit, not by much though. Well, yeah, there's twice as much, three times as much kokum as there is the other ones. This is my new little scale that I got for 20 bucks, which was so nice to finally have because making my lotions, I have so many ingredients that just require these tiny, tiny, like 0 0.001 of something like my aloe times 100 powder, stuff like that, where you really need these tiny, tiny little scales to get you what you need and let's see we're so close here and I'm so scared of wrecking it I'm such a klutz that this delicate tiny little scale I seriously I keep thinking I'm gonna wreck it if I'm not extra careful okay to see literally 0.95 and I want the exact measurement I just do I know that tiny little bit isn't going to make much of a difference, not in this, but I can't help it. I want it to be perfect. And it's kind of funny because using this small of a batch, this is going to fill, like, okay, in theory, this would fill 12.15 ounce tubes. But because if you've made lotion before, you know that, um, I have to tear this, you know that as you pour, it thick, it hardens up around it. So you, you end up having to remelt it and pour it in, which increases your chances of graininess because you've now taken it, reheated it to get hot enough to pour that last bit out. And you're going to worry about graininess and you should worry about graininess because it just, ugh. It's there and it doesn't want to go anywhere. So I've temp, like I said, I've tempered before. And I think, is it the reheating 
this, yeah, this is my mango. I'm not sure if it's tempering and then reheating it again that gives it that graininess. And I don't know, I gotta say, shea butter is, I'm starting to think I may have to eliminate it. Like, I, I think I might have to just to avoid that. There's nothing worse than making a gorgeous lip balm. And you start using it and you're like, oh, it's so silky and so nice. And then two weeks later, you know, you're halfway through the tube and all of a sudden it's all grainy. If you're selling lip balm, the last thing you want is for somebody to use it and then think, huh, why did my soap maker put sand in my lip balm? <laughs> because it's, it's not nice. If it's for yourself, it's different. So I do know that I understand how it works. So, okay, I'm doing point three of Kokum, which is my new favorite go-to lip butter. But it's so cool. It feels really neat. Like if you haven't used Kokum butter, it's really interesting. The texture is almost like powdery. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of an interesting texture. It really is. But, excuse me. I think I was talking about Shay. I'm all over the map and I'm in such a bad mood today. So I'm so glad that I'm here talking to you guys because you guys don't tick me off. And right now there's a few people that are just ticking me off and put me in a bad mood, which is throwing me completely off topic about the Shea butter. Oh, that's what I was saying. Basically, you want to get it to its melting point. Now, I can't find a straight answer on this one and I have looked everywhere. The one thing you have to do that I everybody agrees on, you have to get it to its melting point and make sure that you get it up high enough that you're you're going to melt the steric acid. You're going to you're going to get everything in there melted. And there seems to be some debate on whether or not cooling it quickly like putting it in the fridge or the freezer is necessary. Now, from what I can tell, more people than not think that yes, cool it down quickly. Don't give it a chance for those crystals to form again. So I've always put my, my lotion bars, my lip balms, I always pop them straight in the freezer when I'm done, always. But with the shea butter, you know, that stuff can't be trusted. It's like one of those people that you want to call friend, but you don't because something about them that you've heard and seen makes you go, yeah, you know, you're nice and all, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that I trust you. That's what shea butter's like. So I tempered them again. And this time I did the, because some people, like I said, some people say you have to um, heat it up to the right temperature and then hold and keep that temperature, maintain that temperature for whatever amount of time or different amount of times. Last time I did that, things seemed fine until I got halfway through my, my bar, like through my, uh, my balm. So, yeah, ugh, okay, we're done talking about that. Until someone finds a cure, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, uh, what, oh, I'm tripping over my own tongue. It is that kind of a day. What I'm going to do first is melt the beeswax and the lotion bar additive. And then instead of melting these with it, I'm going to try to do heat transfer. I'm going to see if I can melt these in the already hot beeswax and lotion bar additive and hopefully not get graininess because another theory is to not temper your butters, but to not, you want to melt them really slow. You want to put them in something that's warm and then let them slowly melt. So, it's the heat. It's the heat and the cool down that is causing graininess. So some people go, well, all you do is you make sure that you melt that real carefully and really slowly. And even when you temper them, you do that too. You don't just crank it up 
Oh, and by the way, do it on a double boiler. Well, that's what I recommend anyway, just from all my research. I tend to go with the majority. If I research for an entire day and the majority of people are saying, do it slow, I'm going to say, do it slow. Don't just fire it into the microwave and get it super hot. If that works for you, yay. I would actually like you to put that in the comments. If you've tempered butters or you have some kind of a trick that you do with shea butter, because shea butter is a monster in this department, then please comment down below and let us all know what you do with your butter to keep it from going grainy on you, because that would be real interesting to know. I don't actually know what people who live down south, like in the States, where it's really hot all the time, how do you guys, I don't know if I would even ever use shea butter because you got to remember lip balms go in purses, they go in your pocket. So the odds of those suckers heating up and melting that shea are really, really high, even here in the summer. So we'll see. I'm going to try this method. And we'll see what it, we'll see what I get. And the funny part about it is it might turn out perfect. But then in a couple weeks, because I always have a few container going, uh, containers going. Like I have this old one. It's empty. And if I have extra when I'm done filling, I top it up. Like I have this old Carmex container, cleaned it out, have this Blistex lip conditioner. So I just cleaned them out and sterilize them and if I have extra I just pour them into here which probably looks bad in public but it looks like I'm not using my own product but I am using my own product so yeah we're gonna try different today even these oils once once this beeswax is melted which I don't know if it's just me but it seems to me that it takes forever to melt beeswax all right okay it's melted so yay and I know better than to grab this with my bare hand because I've done that before. Never ended well. So that's really hot. I'm going to add my oils first, I think. Today's a bit of an experiment. Because today it's all about the butters and what they usually do to me. So we'll see. Because I have a whole bunch of lip balm to make, actually. I'm going to make my first tinted one, too. I have a... Raspberry glaze I got. That's the uh, flavor oil. And oh my goodness, it smells so good. But I want to tint it. I want to tint this one, I think. Well, not this one, but the raspberry glaze. I want to tint. But see, wax to me is always a little, I find it a little bit funny. See, it's nice and hot. Okay, I added those oils. Now, <laughs> Let's add our butters. Let's do kokum first. And as usual, I will be popping this in the freezer. You know what? Should I dump it all in? What's my temperature at? Wow, that is some hot. So I'm going to write it down actually. 232. Really hot. But I'm going to melt this first. Then I'm going to add the shea and the mango. Kokum, I don't think, is a grainy butter. I, if you haven't used it, you should really try it. It's an interesting butter, and the properties are amazing. Do a little research on it. And then, yeah, get it. Try it in a lotion bar. It's actually really nice. Like, I broke off a piece a while back. And I had it in one of my little containers like this. And I was just pulling out the chunk and rubbing it on my lips. Just because I was fascinated by the texture. It's very interesting that a butter would have such a powdery consistency. That's, that's the only way I can word it. Powdery. Okay, let's add you. That's the shea and the mango. See, I'm melting it real fast because this is so hot. But I will cool it down very quickly. And I did Google today. Because, you know, me and the whole editor thing, I'm not paying for an editor. I can't afford to. And Windows 10 didn't come with Movie Maker. And even when I downloaded it, it just screwed up all my videos. But I Googled today if YouTube maybe had one. And it does. So what I can do is, you know, make 
make one video in three parts. I can just upload them separately and then seam them together. So now I'm going to add my coconut cream, flavor oil, never go over the recommended usage rate for a flavor oil. Not just because you're not supposed to, but because you'll go from a nice sweet flavor oil to a very bitter flavor oil and you don't want that. I made that mistake once, I will not make it again. So this one you can use up to 2%. I'm using 1.5%. And now it's time to pour. I just want to make sure it's properly mixed. But see, odds are, I don't know. Normally, it's hard for me to fill all my containers at once. I usually have way more, though. But with every pour, it sticks to the side and it, it starts, blah, tripping over my tongue starts to solidify but this pyrex thing is so hot right now that maybe it won't so we'll see and i used to use rubber bands which trust me it's a great trick to hold them all together to fill but then if you spill on the sides they're a pain to clean up so i hope you can see what i'm doing and you know for somebody with shaky hands lip balms they really are tricky and another tip for your lip balms is if you find that after you've poured, you get the, the dip in the middle or a hole in the middle, it doesn't look right, it's an easy fix. Just take your heat gun after they're cooled, run it over there, and you'll have a beautiful smooth top. So, yeah, great tip. Heat gun fixes it all. Another thing is, like I said, I'm putting it in the freezer. Do not keep it in the freezer too long or it will crack. Which you can also fit, fix with a heat gun. But if you can avoid having to fix with a heat gun, avoid it. And I always like to top these off because they look full right now. But the second they start to cool a little, they sink. And if I have, and I usually do have extra... I like to warm it up and just top it off so that when you open it up, you have a nice full lip balm. It looks, you know, it might be a little more than the 0.15 ounce that it says on the label, but hey, you give that tiny bit extra. Why not, right? So here we go. Wow, this Pyrex thing is so hot right now that even through this cloth, my fingers are burning. I may be a slow worker sometimes, but this will speed me up. My hands are burning. Kind of like when I piped hot process. Ha ha ha. Yeah, if you've never piped hot process, I will warn you right now. Get ready. Your hands are going to burn real bad. Oh, that was a bad spill right there. But you know what? That's not so bad compared to my usual, my usual spills. Ow, it's hot. I was going to complain how hot my soap room was. This is going to be absolutely perfect. Come on, baby. You only have a little bit more to make it. You probably cannot see that, but I'm so close to this one being full. Like, so close. Come on, baby. Well, that one might have to be for mom. I'm going to see if I can warm it up a bit more. Which I know sounds a little bit funny. Warm it up a little bit more while I'm telling you it's burning my hands. But I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the dip? I don't want to pick it up and tilt it. But my pores were great. Yay. Okay, I better not do more than that. But see, I do wonder, okay, no, that's not going to work. I do wonder if this, you know, you temper the butters and then you reheat them by putting them in this super hot beeswax. Does that make the graininess come back after you've tempered? I don't know. But okay, I'm going to pop this in the freezer and then I'll come back to show you what it looks like when it's done.
So I will be right back. Okay, I wasn't sure when that started recording or not. Sorry if you had to wait a second. Okay, pull these out of the freezer. I did leave them in a little bit too long. I got distracted. So I'm going to hold this up and see if you can see the crack, which happens when you cool them too quick. But no big deal. There is a fix for this. Now, can you see how not a full that is? See, that's actually the right weight. It's the, it's the right weight. I wish I could show you better, but I don't. There you go. Now you can see it. So the crack, easy to fix, like I said. Now I had this one that I couldn't fill all the way, which I said was going to be for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remelt this one down, which could completely screw up my whole try not to reheat because blah, blah, grain. But I want to cap these babies off. I do. They're not full enough for me. I like them to look nice, full, and round. So I'm going to take the same container I had. I haven't washed it yet. Oh, by the way, I don't remember where I heard about this trick. Best trick ever. If you work with wax or if you've just begun to work with wax, you have discovered the whole nightmare of trying to clean up wax. Best trick ever. I wish I could remember where I heard this because I would love to give that person credit by naming them by name. But she had said, all you have to do is get your container nice and hot, put some baking soda in it, grab a paper towel and wipe. Totally works. Absolutely it works. It literally just grabs. It grabs it right off. Okay, you know what? See, this one's still a little liquidy at the bottom, which makes me go, huh, should I have left this a little longer? But that's also right in the right down in the middle there where the mechanism is so I'm just gonna break it because I want it to melt evenly I don't want it to get super hot on one corner and yeah you know where I'm going with that okay so I'm gonna pop this in the microwave real quick again not long ago Sorry, kind of noisy here. I'm going to do 25 seconds, see if that's enough. Because I would like, this one's just going to be for me after. I just wanted enough that I can cap these babies off. And make them look all smooth and pretty and perfect. Okay, we are not melted. Let me check. Okay. See now for all I know this could be perfect and not grainy and the fact that I'm remelting this all I'm going to cap it off maybe the tops of them will be grainy would that not just be the way that's okay the more I mess around with this shea butter and stuff the better I may discover that I'm going to ditch shea butter altogether and use it only in my soaps. And I do wonder about lotion because in all my research about grainy uh, shea butter, I had seen a few people mention lotions and oh boy, the idea of shea going grainy in a lotion, ew, like eh, that would be really, oh, it'd be awful. Okay, let's melt. Ting. It's not melted, as you can see, but I think the heat from this Pyrex is going to be enough to, to melt what's left. I feel like I, am I seeing things here? No, I'm not seeing things. Okay. You know what I usually use, and I don't know why I didn't when I started this? is these little sticks, I don't, oh, coffee stirs, that's what they're called. Got them at the dollar store and I paid a buck for like a bag of, geez, I don't know, how many are in here? 150. 
and they are so handy especially if you're working with clay and stuff and you need to just blend up some clay and give it a quick stir with something since you're not supposed to use metal these things are awesome they go a long way for a dollar it's awesome and yes this is melting beautifully so i can cap everybody off haul them back to the freezer better do this because it is very very hot please don't tip over come on now this is the part where I have to be so careful because I'm just doing the top ah ooh, that one almost went over it does not look as though I'm gonna have to fix these at all how great would that be? Because it's not often. Usually I do have to end up, you know, fixing just little bits that aren't perfect enough for my anal retentive self. Uh, you need a bit more. You're good. But you can't see it from this angle. But now my drops are like at the spout. It's hard to control the perfect pour because there's a solidified drop on the end, which gets worse every single time you go to the next one. But I do like my lip balms to be full. I Just because it says 0.15 ounce on the tube, I do like to open it up and go, ah, there's a nice full round lip balm. So there we go. Got to pop these back in the freezer. I'll be right back. Okay, they're back out of the freezer, and I'm just going to plug in my heat gun real quick. Okay, the reason I'm doing this, and I may have to reach over and click my screen again because it says there's no audio. The reason I'm doing this is because I almost forgot. When you add that little bit at the top to cap it off sometimes, what can happen is you go to take a swipe with your first bump like your first swipe on your lips and that cap pops right off so i'm just going to heat it up make it perfect sorry i just need to get this as hot as i need it you don't want to melt it too much just enough to make it beautiful and don't hold your heat gun too close because you might actually blow your bomb off the edge of the side don't want to do that there, perfect. Now, this 